Hello. Methods of mimicking having more than two checkpoints have been a subject of occasional interest throughout Mario Maker's lifetime. The most common method has always been the infinite checkpoint format, where you repeatedly grab two checkpoints while completing sections that give you pink coins, which is a fine format, but it does have certain limitations. Most conspicuously, it generally does not force an order in which the rooms must be completed in, so it doesn't effectively mimic a linear level with more than two checkpoints. The main source of difficulty in forcing an order is that the only information stored between deaths is information about pink coins, which are very non-interactive objects. If I wanted to force an order, I would need means of judging whether a path has been completed based on whether the path's pink coin has been collected, but it's always been tough to force certain results based on the existence of a pink coin or lack thereof. We did technically have some ways of forcing order in Super Mario Maker 1, but they didn't work in all engines and could be somewhat confusing for the player. However, with Comix's recent find that a collected pink coin briefly contributes to the number of currently loaded sprites, we now have engine-independent ways of building machinery that can check whether a pink coin was previously collected or not. Not only can we do this, but we can build machinery that completely automatically judges the player's progress in the level and places them in the appropriate spot, even after death. The general point of this video is to present some guidelines for how to do this in a way that not only works but is also pretty efficient and very usable in a normal level, as opposed to being a mere technical curiosity that might be obnoxious to deal with in practice. I've had footage of a level that uses machinery like this plane, and I'd like to start out by discussing this specific example and then present the generalization afterwards. The first thing to note is this recurring structure where a screen on a track hits a shell towards an on and off switch, and a muncher comes out of the red pipe shortly before the shell can hit the switch. This structure is set up so that, under normal conditions, the muncher will crush the shell before it can reach the on and off switch, but the sprite limit is carefully set up and monitored here so that something can go wrong. Observe that we have a ton of one ways towards the left side of this level. The point of these is to inflate the number of currently loaded sprites so that, barring the pink coins, the munchers will be coming out of their pipes when the sprite limit only allows one more sprite to load. There's also some stuff going on in the lower right that's important for the sprite count, but we'll get to that later. The next thing to talk about is the central hub, which is the area that contains the entrances to the different paths of the level. You'll notice that this is much more restrictive than a typical central hub in an infinite checkpoint level. When Mario enters the hub, he is moved automatically so that he always reaches pink coins, or spots that once held pink coins, shortly before a muncher comes out of its pipe. When Mario does collect a pink coin, this causes the sprite limit to temporarily be reached so that the pipes can't spawn munchers, a shell hits an on and off switch, and Mario is forced into a certain path. As with a typical infinite checkpoint level, Mario grabs both checkpoints after clearing a path to save the last pink coin that was acquired. Upon completing a path and re-entering the hub, the last coin Mario grabbed won't be stopping him anymore, and he can move on to the next room. If he dies, the machinery will put him back in the same room he just died in, since the pink coin he most recently saved is now absent. Speaking of collecting coins and dying, there should be an inaccessible pink coin somewhere so that key death isn't possible. There's one more big thing to mention in this example, which also comes up a lot with these sorts of systems in general. Actively keeping the number of currently loaded sprites where you want it to be can be very cumbersome because the machinery itself will generally alter the sprite count. In this case, a muncher coming out of the pipe increases the number of loaded sprites by one. You might think this is offset by the shell it kills, but it turns out that the shell still counts as a sprite while it is falling off screen after being squished. The five munchers on tracks in the lower right that I briefly showed earlier fix this problem. These are placed so that whenever a muncher is set to come out of a pipe and increase the number of sprites by one, then one of these munchers on a track immediately falls off screen, despawns, and decreases the sprite count to whatever it previously was. Without this correction mechanism, the number of sprites would quickly rise too high for a muncher to come out of a pipe regardless of whether a coin is being collected or not, and Mario's progress will be limited to a certain point. 
I've built a few systems like this and I pretty much always find myself including some sort of decreasing sprite counter mechanism like this to offset new sprites that are introduced by the machinery itself. With that example out of the way, here are some rules you can follow if you want to build something similar. Number 1, Mario is forced to move automatically upon entering the hub in a path that crosses pink coins, each of which corresponds to one of the level's paths. It's important that Mario's movement is forced because if the player has some freedom, then they might be able to speed up or delay some pink coin collections and break some of the machinery. Number 2, have an inaccessible pink coin somewhere so that key death is not a factor. This is the analog of a safety coin for this system. In this case, there isn't any need for the player to acquire a key since the pink coins are only used to judge what path the player is taking, so it's good to have an inaccessible pink coin to completely prevent key death from being a possibility. Number 3. As Mario navigates the hub, the sprite count is manipulated such that the number of currently loaded sprites is one less than the sprite limit whenever Mario approaches a pink coin or a spot that once held a pink coin. Personally, I wouldn't worry too much about this until the rest of the hub is more or less finished. Once you've got all the basic sprites placed in a good number of one ways, just make sure you have some mechanism for decreasing the sprite count to compensate for any new sprites you're introducing, if necessary. Number 4, for each pink coin there is a resettable structure involving a pipe or blaster, I'll just assume a pipe, in which the pipe is set to release an object shortly after Mario grabs the corresponding pink coin. If the pink coin is being collected now, the pipe is delayed and Mario's position is halted, committing him to the collected coin's path. If the pink coin was previously collected and saved, the pipe prevents Mario's position from being halted. While it's not technically necessary, I generally recommend using the same structure repeatedly. I also recommend having whatever sets off each structure be moving the same speed as whatever is moving Mario, as this greatly simplifies the process of syncing the pipes and blasters with the pink coin collections. Also, the fact that the machinery needs to be resettable means you should generally avoid things like objects coming out of blocks for the purposes of these structures. So that's it for this video. If there are any questions or comments, feel free to let me know.